In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Nebula Brush Pack I created for Corel Painter. So I've already installed the box file for the Nebula Brush Pack. But before we start painting with these brushes, let's go ahead and go to our canvas here. Let's select black. And let's go ahead and fill our canvas with black. Because these are glow brushes, which means that they're going to build up to a lighter color. So they need to be on a dark background. The background doesn't have to be black, but it needs to be really dark. So if you wanted to, you could choose a dark blue like this. Now you could paint on a single layer if you want to, or you can create a separate layer. I'll do that down here in the layers panel. You may also want to change the composite method to something like screen if you want your glowing layers to blend properly with the layers underneath. I'll show you what I mean in just a bit. So with my blank layer selected, I'm going to go over to my Nebula brush pack. Let's go ahead and start with the first option here, which is Bright Star. Now if you're doing a painting of a nebula, you're going to need to paint lots of stars. And so this first option gives you kind of a bright glowing star. So using the same dark blue color I have selected, I'll go ahead and just paint a stroke with this brush. And it's going to look very faint. Now you could use this brush to create brush strokes, but this brush is intended to be used by just kind of tapping and holding in one place with your pen. So if I tap and hold, the longer I let it hold, the more it's going to build up. You can also use your mouse and just click and hold. Now I have a color that's almost too dark for this particular brush, so let's make it just a bit lighter. Now if we tap and hold, it builds up the color, but it starts to get a little bit white in the center. And that's more what we're going for. If you want less of that white, make your color darker. If you want more of it, make your color lighter. But even a subtle change makes a difference in the halo around the star. Now if you go too bright here, it's gonna build up to white too quickly. And if you choose white, then you're not gonna get that nice halo. But this may be the effect that you want. So I can just quickly kind of tap in here, and depending on how long I tap and hold, I'm gonna get stars of various sizes and intensities. So if I do really quick light taps, with light pressure, I get distant stars. If I do heavy long taps, then I get these big, really obvious stars. And I'm gonna go ahead and select all, and then just hit backspace to clear out all that mess. So for now, I'm just gonna choose maybe kind of a dark blue like this, and I'll just put in a star, just to have one in here. But let's take a look at some of the other types of stars we can put in. I'm gonna skip over star rays for now, and let's move on down to fine stars. Now with fine stars, I'm gonna to wanna to select a color that's a bit brighter. Let's try a kind of pale blue like this, and let's paint with this brush, and you can see that I get this nice dusty effect that creates a lot of little stars. Now I can make my brush much bigger, and I can get a larger distribution of stars, and just paint over my entire canvas like this to put in all of these stars. Now if I want the stars to be brighter and more noticeable, I can select white, and then here and there I can kind of sprinkle in some stars. Now if you want stars that are more clustered together, you can choose fine star clusters. And if I paint a stroke with this brush, you can see they're more clustered together. So if you wanted to do something like a galaxy, you could do that. But you could also use it just to quickly sprinkle in stars if you wanted some that are bigger. Or if you wanted to be more controlled about it, you could kind of just tap them in like this. And then if you want to put some more emphasis on some of those stars, you can go back to bright star. I want to select kind of a darker color so I get some of that nice halo effect. And then I can just click or tap on some of those stars to brighten them up if I want to. If I want them to be a little more discreet, I can select an almost white color. I can even make my brush smaller, and I can do some stars like this. Now you would want to spend your time adding lots of stars here. I'm just going to kind of show you this for demonstration's sake. So I'm not going to put in as many stars as I would normally put in. Let's try another type of stars, and that's called star rays. Now oftentimes when you see a photograph of a nebula, the light from the star is kind of radiating out of it. So if I select a dark blue, and I tap and hold, on one of these stars, then I can make it glow and make light rays come out of it. But I don't even have to select a star, I can just kind of tap and hold in any spot and create a star that has light rays coming out of it. So you have some options for all the different kinds of stars you can create, and by adding them all together you get a really nice effect. And then you can also have red stars and orange stars and yellow stars. It would help to look at some photographs of nebulae, that way you can get a feel for what you're trying to accomplish. So I'll go ahead and just name that layer stars. Now let's move on to some of the brushes that can create nebula effects. Let's start with nebula blobby. I'll go ahead and create a new layer for that. 
Now, depending on how you want this to blend with the layers underneath, you could leave it set at default, but you could also set it to screen, or you could experiment with some of the other composite methods if you want it to blend with the layers underneath and look more transparent. So a nebula is essentially gas in outer space, and if it's lit from the back, then it's going to kind of obstruct the light. It might block it entirely, or the light might shine through it. It might be blue in one area, green in another, and orange in another, depending on the light that's around it and the type of gas. And then, of course, the overall shapes of the nebulas can change depending on the type of nebula. So these brushes will give us a pretty wide range of effects, but you can also use other brushes that aren't in the nebula brush pack to create your painting. For now, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at default. I'll name that layer Nebula, and let's choose kind of a dark red-violet color like this. Now, if I build up a stroke here and just do kind of circular strokes, and I can get this really nice glowing nebula effect. Now, if I continue to build it up on itself, it's going to get lighter and lighter, just like the stars did. And you'll notice that if I paint over the stars, our paint is opaque, so it's covering the stars up. If you don't want the nebula to be opaque and you want it to be transparent, then here's where you'd set the composite method to something like screen. Now you can see through to the stars beneath, and it looks more like gas floating in outer space. But as I mentioned earlier, you can have gas in the nebula that covers up everything that's behind it, so it's up to you to choose the right composite method for the effect that you want. Now I can blend in other colors. I could blend in kind of an orangey red color like this. This is maybe too bright for a natural nebula. You'd want to desaturate your color a bit, maybe make it a bit darker, and just hunt around until you find the color that you want. You can also make your brush larger, and you can get a larger, softer nebula like this. If you use lighter pressure, you can build it up a bit more slowly. So I could put in something like that, and then I could go back to my bright stars, and here I could put in a bunch of stars, maybe surrounding that center area to add some points of interest. If I wanted a really big star there, I could make my brush larger and just build it up like that. Could have another one there, and maybe a little third one there. Let's take a look at another type of nebula, and that is Nebula Bunch. Let's choose a different color this time. Let's say kind of a dark green. I'll put in some of that over here. You can see that I get a different style of nebula. And this could kind of branch out like this and look like it's kind of exploding. If I wanted to, I could select some other colors and blend those into it. And if you want to add some motion or movement to your nebula, one thing you can do is you can select a blender, such as the Diffuse Blur Blender, and you can kind of pull out radially from the center or in whichever direction you want to move the nebula. Then you can get something that looks like it's exploding. And of course, I could go in here again and choose a bright star. I could put in a star in the center. And I could have some other stars surrounding it like this, because you'll have stars in front of it and stars behind it. Do some smaller ones here in the foreground. You could also take stuff and push it around using the distortion brushes. So if I wanted to move around this blobby one, and kind of pull it into a certain shape, I could do that. And then of course I could go through and blend it again using Diffuse Blur, if I want to soften it out. Now one thing you'll notice with Diffuse Blur is that it does have a habit of creating this white fringe. One thing you can do about that is you can change your composite method to gel cover, but that changes the overall look and blend of that layer and that just doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and change this back to screen. So I'm going to go ahead and do some undos before I blended. Another option for blending is to take your nebula and move it down beneath your stars. And if you don't think you'll need to do anything else to your canvas, then you can merge it down with your canvas. One thing I'll do on the canvas layer to really help this effect is I'll go ahead and go to my airbrush. And I'm going to airbrush in some other colors of gas here so that we don't have just a static color. Now if I go ahead and just merge that nebula down with the background, then I can go in and I can blend it with the Diffuse Blur Blender, and I don't have to worry about that weird white fringe. So I could go through here and kind of fade out some of this stuff into nothing. Could do that over here with some of this and just have this gas kind of fade out and get a bit softer. But because those stars are on a separate layer, we don't have to worry about accidentally blending over them and messing them up. So make sure to keep them separate. If you want the stars to look like they're getting blocked by the nebula, one thing you could do is add a layer mask. So for example, I could do that here, select black, then use my airbrush, 
to go in and paint anywhere where I want to cover up some of those stars. Or you could, of course, use your eraser, but using the mask is non-destructive. I've gone ahead and switched to a new canvas where I've already painted in some stars. So I'm going to go ahead and paint on top of that with some more Nebula brushes. I'll create a new layer. Then I'll go ahead and select the next brush, which is Nebula Flow Map. I'll select a color here, let's say maybe kind of a dark orange. And I'll paint with this. Nebula Flow Map will build up to a nice light color. But if I just do a few thin strokes like this, then I can create more of a fractal shaped cloud. I can do swirly shapes and just put in all kinds of stuff like this. If you want it to glow in a certain area, just keep painting over it. As its name implies, it's using the flow map, so you could change your flow map to something else. You would do that in the flow maps panel. So for example, I could change it to find dots. And now when I paint, I'm getting a dotted pattern, which makes it look a little more gaseous. We can also try marbled. You can get more of a marbled pattern here. And then you can play with the scale and the contrast of this pattern. Now right now this is opaque, so it's covering up what's underneath. The stars are the topmost layer, so all it's really covering up is the canvas, but the canvas does have some gas on it. If you wanted it to blend with the layers underneath, then again, you'd want to change it to screen. I'm going to go ahead and clear that out. I'm going to hide my stars for a minute. I want to show you another way that you could use this brush. I'm going to set my flow map back to clouds, and I'm going to paint with this brush. And because this is creating kind of a fractal pattern, you'll naturally get these little gaps that don't have anything in them. You can paint around these like so, and you can kind of imply negative space where you might have gas that's in the foreground blocking the light and the lights coming from behind it. So that's another way that you could use this brush. As you can see, I'm getting those natural shapes here and I'm just outlining them. And of course, if you wanted to, you could use other brushes. I could select my smooth palette knife here. I could sample one of these lighter colors and I could paint along the edge to highlight that. So I'm not limited to using only the brushes in this brush pack. If I need to add some finishing touches with other brushes, I can do that. But the point is I want to be able to do the bulk of my painting with these brushes because they give me these nice effects randomly. Let's go ahead and clear that out and we'll bring back our stars. The next brush that we'll look at is Nebula Flow Speckle. I'm going to select kind of a dark purplish color. I'll put in some of that. We get this really nice speckly effect. I'm going to blend another color into it here, like this red. And maybe we'll have kind of a green over here. Now that looks pretty cool on its own, but again, you could blend it in different ways. Another thing you could do is go to Effects, Focus, Zoom Blur. And if you apply a Zoom Blur, that gives it kind of a little bit of movement. I'm going to create a new layer. We'll have that on top of the other layer. I'll just leave it set at default for now. And let's take a look at Nebula Glow. I'm going to select a dark blue, almost black color. And I'm just going to paint with this here. Now right now this isn't glowing, but I'm just showing you that you can create really dark, opaque clouds in the foreground. If you want to have that kind of effect as well. Then you can go behind it. And then here's where you could use this brush to create some different glowing effects. Now this brush kind of twirls around. But what you can do is you can kind of hold in one place and build it up and let it do its thing. Let's try the next brush and that's Nebula Spider. I'm painting on this screen layer here. I'm going to use a dark green. If I paint with this brush, I get this nice tangled spider web kind of effect here. Just going back and forth in one spot to really make it glow in that spot so we can have it kind of fade out into nothing. If I wanted to, I could blend in some other colors. And then if I wanted to blend it, I could merge it down with my background layer. I could select Diffuse Blur. And I could kind of lightly fade out the edges here using very light pressure. Or I could even select this Smooth Knife Blender. And I could blend it like this if I wanted to remove some of that jaggedness in the shapes. I'm going to move to this extra layer here that I have. Let's go to the next brush, which is Nebula Stringy. I'm going to select kind of a pink color like this. Nebula Stringy gives you this nice ribbon kind of effect. So you can put in some stringy nebulas like this. 
You could, of course, set the composite method to screen if you want it to be able to blend like that. I'm going to clear that out. I'm just going to use this greenish color here. And I'll just have some gas that's kind of coming off of this, creating some interesting patterns. Maybe we'll use some purple as well. Then, of course, we can go in and we can blend that. We'll want to merge it down with a layer underneath. And now we can blend. Now you have to be careful because you will be blending all of this stuff together. So just blend the stuff that you painted in. If you need to keep those layers separate, then definitely keep them separate. I'm going to go ahead and revert this. Let's try the next brush, which is Nebula Tangle. I'm going to go ahead and hide my stars. I'm going to select maybe kind of a yellowish orange color like this, and I'll paint. I want to set the composite method to screen, and you can build up in one spot and make it brighter and have it kind of fade out. Make my brush bigger, and I want you to see the kind of texture and pattern that you can get. There's these lines that emanate out and blend in some other colors as well. And if I want to, I can go in with my Smooth Knife Blender. I can blend some of that to make it look a little bit more cloudy. And of course, if you don't want to get this white fringe, then what you'll have to do is merge it with the background. Then you can blend it like that. But as you can see, you can use this as a starting point to get some really interesting cloudy effects. Let's take a look at the next brush, which is Nebula Wispy. I'm going to select kind of a lime green like this. I'll just do kind of a quick mark. And then just do one more over it, and maybe one more. And you get these really interesting wispy shapes. No two will look the same. So if you use some interesting gestures with your pen, you can get some really cool starting points for your Nebula shapes. If you want it to build up more gradually, you can make your color darker. And the next brush is Nebula Wild Speckle. If I do a slow stroke, you can see this brush kind of jumps around a bit on its own. So that's why I call it wild. Because if you do kind of a quick gesture like this, it's going to move around a lot more and give you a more random kind of shape. You can, of course, make your brush smaller if you want smaller shapes. Or you can make it larger if you want larger shapes. And the final brush that we'll look at is called Space Dust. Now Space Dust, if you tap and hold, gives you some things that might work well for larger stars or suns. But you can also use it to paint like this. So if you wanted to create kind of a galaxy, you could do that. But you can also change your paper grain to something else. Let's say simulated wood grain with the scale and contrast all the way up. Now I get this nice cloudy textured pattern. And I could use this to build up nebula shapes this way. If I switch my paper back to my default paper, and I could put a nice bright star in the center there. I could even use it to put in little individual stars if I make my brush smaller. And if we put all these brushes together, then we end up with something like this. So you can see I have the stars separate, but here's all the nebula stuff that I painted. Now, I did go over this and I blended it quite a bit. But the bulk of these shapes and a lot of this detail and a lot of this misty stuff was all accomplished using the Nebula Brush Pack. You can see here and over here are areas where I didn't blend quite as much. And then of course these stars were created using the star brushes in this pack. So there you go, that's a demonstration of how to use my Nebula Brush Pack for Corel Painter.